All right. Welcome back. We, of course, thank you for sticking with us here. Once again, I'm Sin, joined by Brandon, a.k.a. B. Major, setting the table here for our second matchup of today, the ECL Elite Spring Season. It will be HV71 taking on YMCA Esports. HV71, of course, off to a pretty decent start after being in one of those uh, possible relegation positions. But these are two teams here um, definitely looking to make their way to the playoffs. YMCA, a team which a couple seasons ago was here in the playoffs, and I think a season before that, as well took on h reds in the semifinals and just narrowly lost to them as h reds made their first final appearance as we mentioned earlier eventually losing to uh now for linda but i mean this match up here you know definitely uh definitely kind of a big one for both of these teams yeah especially for an hv71 team that currently sees themselves in a playoff spot as things stand and remember this is a team that was in the relegation series last season had to fight their way to even stay in ECL Elite, so for them to be playing the way they have been, stealing a point against Rolanda a few days ago, it's been pretty interesting to see them kind of fighting their way into that playoff spot, and what better way to go in and potentially get four points tonight than on prime time here at twitch.tv slash sportsgamer, and you know, if they could maybe continue to rack up these points, then we could be talking about them as being a surprise team going into the playoffs, so it's been impressive for them so far, they were a team projected to be well outside, maybe they could find a way to get in. Absolutely. I have to, I made some good changes uh, to their roster as well, but we'll go ahead and take a look now at some of the later results. We're not too sure if we do have the uh, the ones from uh, the last series submitted in there. Yes, yeah, we do. Right there. H-Red's uh, goons be, uh, shutting the mouth two times, both 3 nothing and 4 nothing here. And you can kind of see, you know, looking across, you see... Uh, the the one that really always stands out to me is IQ and the, the Fallon Coal Miners there. Coal Miners off to a, a really a fantastic start there. Is they really kind of to me surprised IQ in those two games because IQ, if you recall, was a team that you know projected to be maybe on the outside looking in, but secured that five seed in the last season. Yeah, and I was watching that game as a spectator while you and Tugi were on the call, and that was just a stellar game, especially in that second one where it felt like both goaltenders were just not going to be denied, and neither one letting any chances up, and it just took that one little kind of squeak by goal that made the difference in that game, and it was so, so fun and so entertaining to kind of watch how that unfolded. It's been really fun to actually see Fallon Coal Miners because a team that no one really knew what to expect out of. They were kind of expected to be like, well, they could maybe be about as high as 6 or 7. They could be as low as about 11 or 12. Right now, they're one of those surprise playoff teams like HV71. So it's been really interesting to kind of see. And another surprise result, how about Stargazing? Beating Goons in regulation 4-3, to three, a team that earned their way in the ECL Elite from Pro last season. So we say all the time, Sin, expect the unexpected. You never know what teams are going to step up and surprise us. A few teams have done so, so far. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I'm sure you, you know, covering pro as you have, have gotten a bit of a better look at stargazing, perhaps. No, you know, they could bring a lot to the table here. So we'll, we'll take a look now at the standings uh, so far over the course of this season here, where you do see uh, Atrids now completely tied with Ferlunda and uh, we'll get the edge uh, above them in the standings based on, I believe, the uh, the goal differential here. Yeah, you said it. I mean, so many teams with the potential to get themselves into those playoff positions still very, very early on. Of course, some teams still with only those four games played, but you're starting to see some things take shape and it's 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 getting very interesting. You know, some some teams that are standing out, as you mentioned, the Fallon Coal Miners here, ZSC off to a good start, but you know, need a bit more games played. Same with HG71. If they're able to pick up three, four points here against a YMCA team, which is struggling out of the gate, they could see themselves being firmly, you know, planted, at least for now, in a playoff seating. Yeah, and I think what makes this so interesting is going back and looking at the season preview, HV71 projected to finish 13th, YMCA projected to finish dead last at 16th. So both of these teams came in well with something to prove, especially YMCA, because from the way the projections have it, they're not going to even be in ECL Elite next season. So it's important for them to come in and try to get those points early. You obviously don't want to fall too far behind. We kind of saw Jer Gordon see that fate last season where they really started getting out of the gate, couldn't really get out of that initial slump. And by the time they kind of started to get things going and adjust to that elite level, it was a little bit too late for them to catch up in terms of the points. So with things being so even with a few of the teams that found their way back in the ECL league, like Yip, like Yip Yavaskula, like Stargazing, kind of playing a little bit better, one of the teams out here last season 
could very well find themselves in that 16 spot, a team like Conquer or Over There Bro or like YMCA. So it's important to get those points as early as you can because not only are you fighting to make the playoffs, but for some of these teams, you're fighting to stay in the elite division as well. Absolutely. There's always something to play for, no matter what your seating is at any point in the season. So we'll take a look now at the matchup between HV71 and YMCA Esports here. And HV71 initially started off with, uh, you know, very good defense. And now you see their goal differential slipping a bit. But the, the problem with them still is being able to get that offense going. Despite a 2-2-2 two, two, and two record, they haven't been able to put up a whole lot of goals. What do you kind of see for YMCA Esports being the thing that they kind of need to improve on so far? I think for YMCA, the biggest thing is kind of the same thing, being able to find a way to put the puck into that. Four games played, only four goals accounted for. And it's kind of similar because both of these teams have had similar paths, but the wins of more or less favor, the results rather of more or less favored HV71, four goals, four, seven against. And it kind of shows you that They've stayed in games, YMCA has, but they just haven't been able to find that goal-scoring punch to be able to get themselves over the hump, so to speak. They played Yip Yavaska, they lost 2-3. to three. They played Forlunda, lost 1 to nothing. So they've shown that they can stay in games against two teams that are in the playoffs. It's just a matter of trying to find that little bit of extra goal-scoring punch to get themselves over the top. We're going to continue here, setting the stage here between HV71 and YMCA Esports. If we do have the graphics ready, we'll move over to the battle of the centers here between Dembski and Angel Kuru here. And this is kind of uh, the situation where you're looking at Dembski, and we know he's a capable player, a very good player, but he just has not been able to get that offense going. Yeah, and sometimes you kind of get off to that slow start and, you know, you can't even necessarily just look at Dembski. It's kind of been a bit of a pattern for a lot of the guys over on HV71. It's, it's pretty interesting because his right winger in Mani Laska, who we'll get to in a little bit, only two points for him. The only player with more than that is Antonio Mann, and he has four. So it's been a bit of a low-scoring affair for the entire HV71 team. So it's kind of one of those things where obviously the stats don't necessarily look pretty on your screen, but it's just been more of a product of how HV71 has played offensively, maybe not getting that hot start that they ideally want to. But the one thing that they've been so good on that centers could impact the game with defense and the way HV71 has played defensively not allowing two goals a game centers means so so much that two-way game Dembski does have that ability so even if he doesn't necessarily make that offensive contribution he makes plenty up for it on the defensive end could be interesting to watch out for him but something else to look out for too that face off percentage on how Kuru which is something that was interesting in the first matchup with goons and eight reds really gonna be fun to see if on how Kuru maybe gets that little extra bit of advantage there at the face off dot and we'll move over now to the wingers here as uh, I'm sure that slight delay making the teams a bit anxious to play. We'll try to get through this next little bit as quickly as we can here. But you mentioned it a little bit earlier, Antonio Manon, really the only one who has found the offensive gun so far for HV71. And he was one of those offseason pickups as well for this squad. So it's good to see him, you know, showing out and kind of pushing that offense, but going to need some support definitely. Yeah, and he was a huge offensive pickup. Remember, he came over from a Granite Gaming team that finished in the semifinals, lost to H Red. So this is a guy that not just has been successful, but has experience being on a winning team. So when HV71 were able to pick him up, they were very excited about that, I'm sure. And he's been solid so far. Maybe not to the overall team effect that they would hope in terms of that goal scoring punch, but I think the more they get used to each other and get things going, they will start to see those goals fall through. And I think you can say the same for YMC a team that brings a lot of chemistry. It's played together for a minute. When things start to get going for them, I think they'll continue to elevate that offensive play and playing against a team in a similar situation for you, a very, very good chance to maybe do that. Absolutely. And we'll move over now to the defensive matchups here on one side. Of course, we have Kauto and Rubitas and then Yuga and Julius on uh, for uh, YMCA here. And, you know, for Kauto, I really have liked his game so far. Very, very solid defensively. And you got to feel like that offense will eventually come. Yeah, and that's going to be what's really interesting to watch because as the offense hasn't come, you have to remember HV71, as we mentioned in the open, they are a playoff team as things stand. They're 2-2-2, two, two, and two, so despite only scoring five goals and having less goals for and they have points this season. How often did you see that? 
they have still found a way to not just win games, but stay in games. And it has been on the back of that defense of guys like Gato and guys like Ruby Tusk. And I think a big factor in that, the block shot 17 between the two of them. So that's going to be really fun to see if maybe that kind of sees itself out as they play a team that might try to put the puck on that a little bit in YMCA Esports. Absolutely. Shot box really important to uh, helping out your goaltenders on the back end. And we'll look at that matchup right now between these two teams. It will be Kofa Linen taking on Bennu, who, and both of their save percentages are, are, are really, really good considering what we just saw. You know, the amount of goals against, it just seems like uh, these two guys at times have really been under siege, but definitely up to the task. Yeah, and you see the save percentage numbers plenty supporting that, 87.8 and 86.5 respectively, and this hasn't been the smallest amount of games these two guys have played. Kofa Linen's played every game for his HV71 team, and so has Benna on the other side, and not only that, but both of these two guys have a shutout to boot as well, so we talked about the defense being a big reason these two have been able to kind of stay in the race, the goaltending just as big of a reason, so it's always fun to see two stellar goalies face off against one another, to see who kind of steals the show, so to speak. We're going to get that here in these next two games. It's going to be a lot of fun to see. Absolutely. I'm getting word that the teams have matched up now as well. So barring any locker room glitches here, we're about ready to get into the first game between HV71 and YMCA Esports here. And it should be an absolute doozy. A lot to play for, for both of these teams. HV71, they want to try to pick up some wins. They want to try to get that offense going. YMCA, they want to try to get back on the winning side of things as well with the one uh, one and three record to kind of start things off here. Not exactly uh, the way they kind of envisioned their season, especially coming as an underdog, which historically they've sometimes done a bit better as an underdog team. But the start they've had so far hasn't been too good. These points very, very important for them. I think that's what really makes this matchup interesting is that these are two teams in very similar similar positions in more ways than one. Defense and goaltending doing great, scoring lacking a little bit, and also two teams that were projected to be a little bit lower in the standings. Like we said, HV71 projected to be 13th, YMCA projected to be the one relegated team automatically at 16th. So both these teams, a lot to prove. They're in similar situations. There's not many more good opportunities to kind of right the ship a little bit than to play a team that's in a similar spot as you. You are going to be a lot of fun to see who's going to step up and maybe snack some points for the side. Yeah, absolutely. As we're just moments away from puck drop here, I mean, eh, every we always talk about it. Every single point is important, but I mean, early on in the season, you want to try to bank as much as possible. You never want to really be playing catch up too much. So here we go, underway. Game one between HV71 and YMCA Esports in those kind of black jerseys in the home YMCA and in the white and. Uh, Really dark blue is HV71 as they try an off-the-board pass to generate some space, but a bit off of the angel. Angle, excuse me, as Sokolo trying to work his way in. Sent all the way back. Yuga there, a bit of a uh, misfor un unfortunate pass there, but alerts to a turnover now. HV71 in the zone, shot on from distance. Rebound opportunity, guys whacking away at it. But Benna will get the smother. Yeah, and you know, that's something that's going to be kind of interesting to see is how aggressive these two teams are to start out. We mentioned a few times, both of these sides kind of struggling to get things going offensively. Well, there's not much better way to get things going than to start out with a quick goal. HP 71 really on the attack quickly. Tony Manon had a shot on net right there, and you like to see that coming out. Another one from an odd angle. Matt Aliska on the doorstep just scooped that one a little bit wide off the rebound. Shot on by Dembski, wasting no time putting the puck on net. We thought we might see that, and HG71's doing just that. Sokolo, some else skating to protect the puck. On Kuru. On that side, thinks about you know, maybe uh, testing that angle, but then look to move the puck here. Down low still with it, but Antonio Mannon will have it a spinorama while standing still. A little bit of flare, perhaps a maybe a misclick there held onto that L, L2 for a little bit too long. Here we go. JM passes over to Sokolo and back to Julius. To JM, but they missed time and at the line. On Hill Kuru, I believe, was a step off. Yeah, you know, it's been kind of interesting. HV71, kind of the aggressors there in the first few minutes, but YMCA trying to slowly but surely push back, and you're seeing that in the shots. Five shots on net already in just a few minutes for HV71. If they can keep this going, you can really see themselves finding a goal here soon, so YMCA going to have to try to find a counter. Yeah, and the pressure coming out from them right now, really forechecking as Antonio Manning comes up with it. Back to Kauto and back down low. Over to Matalaiska Mata there. See, he's uh, holding it on the half wall here, and YMCA hard-pressed to get this puck out of the hands of HV71, but they've been unable to penetrate the middle so far. There it is, shot on by Dembski. 
turned aside by Bennett. Here comes JM. Beats Rubitus wide. Gets the puck down low on Helkuru. Can't follow up with it. Sokolo now trying to work that one in. And kept in was by Julius. And now Antonio Manon over to the middle to Dembski. And HV71 gains the line. Dembski creates space. Tries to send that one on. Just too much traffic. Missed opportunity right there. It looked like Yuga just couldn't get his the pickup right there. And unfortunately for the HV71 forechecker, he got the buffered slap shot instead of the bump that he was looking for. Matalaiska now retrieves the puck. And HV71 continuing to swarm YMCA in their own zone. Dembski. Nice play right there. The shot on, well blocked by Sokolo, and JM will move the puck out. Numbers coming down that left wing side. Passed over on Helkuru. Didn't pull the trigger right there. He may have had Kofa line and beat, just couldn't find a way to get the shot off, and a huge missed opportunity on the counterattack for YMCA. Antonio Manon now behind the net. Issue 71 looking to capitalize what may have been a bit of a mental lapse for YMCA. Looking to counterattack now. Nice pass over to Angel Kuru to Sokolo. And JM enters the zone. Sokolo with it now, trying to gain that half wall. And here comes Antonio. Sent back to Kauto, but a nice poke. And Sokolo and JM will start the attack. Great play on the wall. Kauto now moving it over. There's Rubitas, a little bit of trouble. And we've seen a bit of a neutral zone uh, chess match plan, uh, pan out here. A lot of pokes in the zone, a lot of loose pucks here. Got to be careful to not get uh, let a man get behind you. Nice poke up front by JM, but he can't retrieve it here. It's a neutral zone battle continues now. Dembski gains the line. Sent down low to Antonio, who misses the puck pickup, and Kauto has it. Antonio back down low, tests the short side, but Benu says no. Julius now with the puck. Getting a bit crossed up with his defensive partner, Yuge, but they move it out. Seconds left here in the first. Angel Kuru breaks it in. A bit of space for Antonio, but not enough time left. He tries to make one move to the middle and couldn't get a last second shot away. So an eventful period to say the least, but nothing appearing on the scoring sheet just yet. Yeah, and you know, it's interesting, Sin. It was all HV71 to start this game out. Then you saw YMCA start to kind of push back a little bit. Only got one really clear-cut opportunity, and unfortunately, Angel Kuru just not able to pull the trigger in time. That was a pretty interesting play. As you can see, he didn't even get the shot on that officially. So it was one of those plays you kind of wonder if maybe he didn't expect the pass or if he just wasn't able to get the animation off on his player and it's kind of one of those chances to where man how different does this game look if ymca is up one to nothing going into the second rather than being tied at zero apiece so that could be a play that we go back and look on and be like man could that have been what swayed this game one way or another because hv71 the dominant team so far in the first yeah, we talk about missed opportunities all the time. I think that's really got to be one. But on the flip side, you know, HV71 all that time and attack six, six registered shots, and they were unable to capitalize as well here. So we're, we're kind of seeing the uh, the offensive troubles of both of these teams, you know, so, sort of maybe some of the, uh, the reasons for that. You know, shots are good. Time and attack is good. But you do have to figure out a way to capitalize. HV71 right back in on it. We'll see if they can get some more dangerous chances here. They For a quick short side opportunity, Bennett turns it aside and, Eventually, we'll get the cover on it. Freeze play. Yeah, and I think a lot of what it has had to do with, with HV71 is they've gotten some pretty good looks. It's just been some of the goaltending performance from Benna showing up, making those big saves. He's denied HV71 of a few really good high danger opportunities. So we'll see if they can maybe break one open. But I think a lot of it, HV71 getting chances, but not even able to capitalize. YMCA just not able to get chances so far through the first 20 minutes. Zuga breaks that puck in on Helkuru, covering him on the point. Sweeps in with it, sent down low. Sokolo to JM, back to Sokolo to JM on the short side. Maybe thought about the shot for a minute, then looked to pass, and it didn't end up getting anything for it. Antonio, bit of nice L skating to get in the zone, gets around the defender as well. Dembski to Matalaiska. Maybe looking for a quick wrap around there, but it goes off the back of the net. Dembski now continuing his pressure with the puck. Just excellent perimeter work so far from HV71, but the middle of the ice is daunting to them, unable to get that across. I like that play, though, as Kauto kind of moved towards the middle right there. Pass, unfortunately, did not connect. As JM will have some space, one-on-one -on -one with Rubitus. Tries to L-skate, nice play by Rubitus to get that puck away, and here come HV71 on the counterattack briefly. 
The puck was uh, bumped off Antonio's stick, and now YMCA back in on the attack. Shot away from JM. Had a bit of space. May have given Kofalainen in a bit of trouble right there. He fought that one off with the block blocker. And H there it is right there. A shot from the point deflected in by Sokolo. YMCA just starts throwing pucks on. They are rewarded with a goal. 1-0. That's a huge play for YMCA. Right when it felt like they didn't have a lot of momentum, they find a way. Just throw it on that Sid. We talk about it all the time. You never know what can happen. It might just go to your advantage. And for YMCA, after what had been a slow start, not many chances, HV71 seeming to control the play. They put that puck on that. It goes to their advantage. And now all of a sudden, they're the ones in control of this game in a 1-0 lead. Absolutely, and HV71 a bit on the back foot again. All that time and attack, all those shots can't matter unless you put the puck in the net right there. They're close. Two shots on the doorstep may have hit some bodies, but Benna also got a save or two in that scramble. HV71 doing what they can, but Benna doing just a bit more and keeping that puck out. Now on the attack once again. HV71, bit more desperation, a bit more urgency in their game. They can, oh, they got to be feeling the heat a little bit. Antonio shoots it on from distance. No deflection, no good rebound. Devsky now behind the, the net. Antonio Manon follows up. Nice play, Meta Lyska buries it. Beautiful pass coming out from Antonio. Excellent work down low from HV71. And Meta Lyska ties this game up at one apiece. How about the leading goal scorer for this HV71 team? Matalaiska finding a way to respond for HV71. And that's so, so big to be able to have that time of attack going, having those chances. And then all of a sudden, YMCA comes in and gets the first punch. HV71 wasting no time to find a response. That's a big goal there for Matalaiska. And all of a sudden, Sim, we're right back where we started. Tie game. Yep, right back where we started indeed, and that's got to favor HV71, at least so far, with the way they've been playing. You know, YMCA won't call it lucky, but it's a good capitalization on an opportunity from, you know, changing their game up. And now, you got to try to find a way to build some momentum because you can't allow this HV71 to continue with the pressure. But here we go, YMCA with some pressure of their own all over HV71 on this four check and continue to get that loose puck. JM trying to pressure Kauto. They can't get it and finally worked out of the zone by HV71. They will have numbers down low. They do force the turnover. Great pinch from Rubitus. Rubitus tries to find the uh, one-time man. That was a dangerous pass down. Sokolo will retrieve the puck for YMCA. On Okuru, back to Ju Julius, who will take a shot on the net. And will get the freeze. So we do apologize. A little bit of another hiccup right here. In gameplay, we'll try to get that sorted out for you as quickly as possible. Instead, now you can tune in to the ASMR version of uh, Sports Gamer. Well, there we go. ASMR didn't last too long. We're right back to actual gameplay. As we do continue to have some uh, hiccups right here, we'll... Do our best to sort that out and uh, be able to call this game for you guys. So it looks like we're a little bit more of a stable connection here as YMCA forechecking down low in the zone. Shot on the side of the net right there. And being able to be worked out now by HV71. Last minute of play here in the second period. Antonio working that out. Nice bit of skating work, but unable to connect on the pass. Now one more rush perhaps for YMCA. JM with the puck. Over to Yuga. Sends it to the middle on oh, net and dangerously. Sitting there is another chance opportunity. Shot from distance and followed up by Sokolo there, but... Covered by uh, Kofalina, I almost thought we had a freeze right there, and then I forgot the, uh, the hilarious goalie animation where they just stay there in the puck cover until the face-off is ready. Speaking of the face-off, that will do it for the second period of a play right here. One-to-one -one game still between these two teams. Something's got to give here going into this last period. Yeah, we kind of talked about how these two teams were in a similar situation and in similar spots. Well, how about this? A similar scoreline, one to one after two periods. And I think you really have to credit YMCA for the way they were able to respond after what was a pretty sluggish first period. It felt like in that second period, they just had a little bit more juice. They were a little bit more aggressive. They were able to get that four check going. They kind of made HV71 think a little bit. Things didn't come as easily as they did through the first 20 minutes there. That second period, HV71 had to earn everything they got 
got in YMCA. You can just tell they've turned it up a few notches in the second compared to the first period. And now here we are. This game is for anyone's taking of 20 minutes to go. It's going to be a lot of fun to see who's going to be able to take advantage of their chances. Yeah, and that's really what it's kind of going to kind of come down to here is we'll get a look at some of the stats as... Once again, we're trying to sort out some uh, issues on our back end here, but I mean, nine registered shots from HV71 with over six minutes time on attack, but at, at the same light, you know, just that one goal to speak of. Why, you know, YMCA kind of changed their game up, started throwing a whole heck of a lot more shots on net, but still, again, with that one, one goal four. Join you guys here about midway through this third period. Fortunately, the, <laughs> the difference making go well just on cue right there. Matalaiska, talk about good timing there from behind the net. Antonio with another great pass, and Matalaiska gets the difference maker right there. Thank you guys for waiting until we were back live to get that uh, go ahead goal right there. H371 take a 2 1 lead. Yeah, and we should thank HV71 for holding on for us, waiting to get the game-leading, potentially game-winning goal, depending on how this thing shapes out, until we got back up and ready to go. Really quick goal there from Madaliska, and all of a sudden, HV71, they get two straight and find themselves with the lead as a big chance from YMC Anderson. That was a blistering shot back there that just whistled wide of the net right there. Kofalina did a good job of kind of getting over for that, but that just had power to just... I think just knock them back into the net regardless. What a shot that was. But YMCA now looking for that tying goal. In a bit of trouble here late in the third. They dump it in. Rubitus had two men pressuring him. Was able to move that puck. But Madaliska can't do a whole lot with it afterwards. JM now pass over Kofalainen. in. Good read. Stops that Sokolo one-timer. Oh, and a beautiful read it was there, Sid. That was a well-designed and well set up play from YMCA, but Kofa Lyon and read it like a children's book all over it, slid right on time to stop that one time, or otherwise YMCA might be tying this one to the two. Quick shot on from Sokolo off of the draw. And Rubitus looking to work that one out. Antonio with the puck. Finds Madaliska up the boards, tries to spin, loses the puck for a minute, but Antonio has it right back. Looking to work it down low, finds Dembski. Dembski with a bit of a delay, then off to kind of throw that one on net from behind the net, looking for perhaps a uh, wraparound chance, but Benna able to stop that and get the smother on it. You see the face-off battle actually quite even between these two teams here, and see if HB71 may have a, a set face-off play in mind that they want to run, but that will be stifled. Anhol Kuru stops that one, and YMCA leading the attack back the other way. Yuga with the puck. He's over to his partner, Julius, who then gets the puck in. JM down the boards, gets his stick kind of knotted up in some bodies here, and it'll be a two-on-one coming back the other way for HV71. Dembski had Antonio look to get for the drop pass instead to Madaliska, and they couldn't connect on it. But they have the puck back down low. Dembski trying to go out front. Madaliska was there, but they couldn't connect. Julius now. Over to Yuge, who sends it all the way up to boards to JM, looking to beat Rubitus wide. Does get around him briefly, but Rubitus sticks with him. Gets that puck back, but relentlessly, JM has it again. YMCA looking to get some pressure, but we are now in the last minute. It will be a slow, real-time last minute here, but YMCA desperately need a goal. HV71 in a 1-4 in a trap right now, trying to keep things st uh, stifled there in the zone. JM on the half boards, back up top to Yuga. JM sends it across, looking for Sokolo, and the puck will skitter out of the zone. Approaching the 30-second mark, the goaltender remains in his crease, not pulling the goalie right now, at least, for YMCA, looking to get that play in. Angel Kuru can't keep the play alive. Maybe a smart play, though, as uh, YMCA instead go for the, uh, the force on the play and just get the whistle there. Yeah, and I don't think that's a bad whistle for YMCA. Things were a little bit hectic and not many opportunities coming out. This is when you wonder, can they break that goal-scoring drought down by one? This is when that opportunity can happen. JM with the puck gets it poked off. Rubitas buying some time. Will finally clear it all the way down. Might be on net. Goes just wide and will go for icing. So 
Well, it may not have been too bad of a look. This does lead to an offensive zone faceoff for YMCA and still uh, Bennett remaining in his crease. So YMCA opting not to pull the goaltender here. On El Kuru with the tie up. He does get the puck. On El Kuru behind the net, grabs it. Sent out front. What a shot on by JM. Perhaps didn't get all of it. Kofa line and gets the smother. The net is now empty. Keep in mind, Angel Kuru, the centerman for YMCA, 57.1% at the faceoff dot. Would be huge if he could win this and give them a quick play. Aggressive set for YMCA. JM gets the puck, sends out front, bass out front, a shot couldn't be, the trigger couldn't be pulled. Excellent job. Stick lift from Mataliska near the half ball, and that will do it here. This first game between HV71 and YMCA, a victory for HV71 in well, a fashion where they've picked up most of their victories this, this year. Very low scoring, very close game. Two to one victory for them, staving off that late attack coming out from YMCA, but nonetheless picking up two huge, huge points. And all is off of that game winning goal to Mataliska to ice it for HV71. And how about that last sequence there from HV71? Said we talked about it coming in, the defense being for the, the goaltending as well for this HV71 team, being the reason that they've found a way to win games and stay in games despite the low scoring tallies. And I think the last couple of minutes really emphasizing on that, the way they were able to collapse in front, not allow YMCA to get that clear cut chance on Kofa Leiden. And whenever they did get that puck on that, Kofa Leiden right where he needed to be making that big save so it just kind of goes to show you and maybe this is a bit of a bold prediction but hv 71 if they can just get that goal scoring going they're a team that is a force to be reckoned with they have the defense they have the goaltending on the back end and kofa line is just can they find a way to score enough goals they did so in this game it only took two and they find a way to beat ymca in our first in this two game set yeah, absolutely. Obviously, getting that offense going can be a lot easier said than done. And on the flip side for YMCA, I think we saw the same kind of thing that Kofalina brought to the table. Bennett was bringing to the table as well. He made some tremendous saves here and there. And I mean, this play in particular, just an excellent job. It actually may have looked like Antonio was going for the rap chance right there with the way his body moved in that animation and just kind of popped out to Mataliska there. Nonetheless, it did lead to a goal. And I mean, this one right here, very similar play. HV71 love the cycle. They love working it down low, kind of very reminiscent of a Havu from a few seasons ago where they generated most of their offense from down there, and it really, really worked for them. Hasn't necessarily come to fruition yet from HV71, but they are, you know, getting a lot of chances, a lot of zone time, and a lot of shots because of it. So, you know, just kind of, you know, put the finishing touches on this offensive strategy and, you know, start getting the, those goals going. But yeah, you said it. I mean, the goaltending in this matchup, we saw it going in two excellent save percentages. And I don't think we were disappointed in the performances at all. Oh, not a single bit. And I, I think that HV71, as odd as this may sound, I think you can almost kind of blame those Havu teams for why it hasn't really worked. A lot of these teams, a team like YMCA that has been on the elite level as, I mean, me and Sin, as, as transparent as ever here on this broadcast. <laughs> but nevertheless, you know, I, I think it's one of those things where teams have kind of adapted to seeing that so often from some of those Havu teams and some of the other teams that have kind of tried to implement that in their own way. Teams have done a better job the last few seasons and couple of years to defend that and not allow themselves to let that play up. But nevertheless, Nevertheless, yeah. for HV71, they use that rap chance. If you're Benna, you have to guard that post. Otherwise, you just kind of have to trust your teammates to take that position and not allow that pass. And unfortunately for him, Matt Eliska was there with all the space in the world to take advantage. So a great win for HV71. They continue to climb the ladder and get points, and they have another chance to do so here, Sid, while YMCA looking to try to hope that maybe the low scoring affair goes in their favor for this next one. Yeah, absolutely. Or they can, you know, get a few more goals uh, of their own as well and kind of repay Benna for some of the, the staunch effort that he had to put up in that first game. But we were going to kick it over to a brief intermission real quick to hear from some of our lovely sponsors here at Sports Gamer. Don't go anywhere. All right. And just like that, teams are matched up. Uh, waits to no time getting into the second game. And with how tight that first one is, uh, first one was and how exciting it was, got no problems with it. Uh, obviously, this was a tremendous day of gameplay as we saw H Reds and Goons uh, taking each other on in that first series. And of course, in this one, HG71 YMCA gearing up uh, for the second, uh, second one here. And uh, coming up tomorrow with uh, myself and you again, Brandon, we'll be getting to covering some more great ECL Elite action. Sawa Esports, Havu Gaming, then once again, YMCA taking on Edinburgh. Uh, it's yeah. going to be fantastic.
Yeah, always a good time sitting in this chair casting a few, my friend, but especially fun when you get two of the top teams from last season, Sawo and Havu facing off, and then we'll get another look at YMCA tomorrow facing Arebro, two teams kind of trying to push for that playoff spot, so kind of similar to the matchup we saw today, but a little bit of a different taste of it, so going to finish off the business today, but a lot to look forward to here tomorrow as well, going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. Here's a YMCA trying to pick up a very important win, a very important couple of points here to at least get the split on this series uh, against H371, who at the very least, you know, looking for at least uh, an overtime contest. You know, that would guarantee them three out of four points, which would be absolutely massive here. So, puck drop. Here we go. Game two between H371 and YMCA Esports. H371 in that uh, dark blue and yellow and YMCA and red and white, a miscommunication right there. Not something you want to see earlier. And then a penalty will be coming after it. This is not the start that YMCA want right here. As HV71 is still in possession, so it'll be a while till we get that whistle. I don't see Kofalainen moving out of the net, however. And he'll just stay right there in the touch on the puck by YMCA. We'll see the first power play for HV71. Yeah, maybe not a disastrous start as they didn't allow a goal, but definitely... Far from ideal if you're YMCA, they have that little miscommunication there in their own zone and it leads to the drawn penalty from Antonio Manon. So all of a sudden, HP 71, a chance really early on in this game to maybe seize the momentum and get the first goal early. And they win the face off here, so it starts off well. Antonio gets a shot away. Looks like it hit something in front, skittered over the net. Mataliska. Nice little give and go. Couple passes on the line right there. Sweet uh, attempt right there from the center Dembski, but he couldn't quite get a, get a stick on that as JM was chasing that one down, trying to get something going on the penalty kill. HG71, bit of a missed pass right there from Antonio will lead to a free clearance for YMCA over midway point of this power play. HG71 just haven't been able to get a really good chance out of it quite yet. Dembski looking to gain the line there, but delayed a bit too much. They do enter right now. Great play by JM on the boards. Will be chased down. And what a shot right there coming out from Rubitas. <laughs> to kind of breathe for a second there as it really looked like that was going to have uh, some some heat on it. And it did. But Benu's glove just a little bit quicker. Yeah, and obviously eight seconds left. But a strong power play for YMCA so far. We'll see if they can keep killing this off. But so far, so good for them. Yeah, as that was uh, an attempt right there, but a nice poke. Antonio has it down low. Man out of the box for YMCA. Back to even strength. Rubitas shot on from distance. Picked up behind the net by Dembski. Two men down low. Antonio has it. Circles back going the other way. Nice play right there by Yuga to force him off. But Dembski has it once again. Antonio, low shot on, looking for the rebound. Mataliska was on the doorstep, but it careens into the corner. Rubitas over to Kauto. Low shot on. Liked it out front, Mataliska just couldn't handle that bounce and get another shot away. Sokolo with a spin move, gets stripped of the puck. Antonio over to Rubitas. Now to Mataliska, tries a one-touch deke, but Yuga says no. Nice pressure right there from Antonio there, but unable to get the turnover. As Yuga and Julius work it between themselves, looking to move that puck up, JM enters the zone. Nice pinch coming out there, looking for the wrap chances. Yuga and a quick shot on by Sokolo there. Maybe didn't expect that puck to get to him. A bit of a delay. Kofalainen was able to get back across and smother it. You know, YMCA, they might be a team that has had their share of struggles offensively, but something that's really fun to watch about them, they do such a good job just countering. All of a sudden, they'll be on the offensive attack after it feels like they've been hemmed in their zone for so long. You kind of saw a glimpse of that there. Just Kofalainen able to be sharp on a save once again, and HP 71 trying to break through. But it's been the one thing YMCA has had the advantages at is that they've been able to counter really, really well. It's how they got the first goal in game one. Tried to find it there in game two there a few minutes ago. Yeah, and they, I mean, they almost had another one with that uh, that play that happened to uh, Angel Kuru when he was just simply unable to pull the trigger there. Yeah, definitely the counterattack, not too much of an issue here. And speaking of which, a delayed penalty, I didn't quite see it, but it will be YMCA going to the power play here off an interference call. Antonio Manon will sit for two. Yeah, and that was interesting. Kind of looked like they were just battling, I guess, for separation or position, and Antonio Manon maybe went up on the right stick, whether it was accidental or not, and nevertheless, he's going to have two minutes in the box, and now YMCA going to get a chance to get a power play themselves, because that may be the difference to separate these two after HV71 couldn't capitalize. Let's see. JM gets possession. Yuge has it on the point. Sent over to Angel Kuru, who takes a shot on Kofa line and gets a pad on it very deep in his crease right there, but... No big rebound now will lead to another faceoff, but not too bad of a start here on the power play for YMCA. And Angel Kuru done a good job on the draws thus far. We'll see if he can win another one here. 
Another tie-up. JM comes in for it, but can't have can't get possession. Ruitas behind the net will get the clear. Not all the way down, however, as Julius comes away with it. Sokolo back to Yuge. And enters the zone himself. Angel Kuru now with it. Hangs back at the point. Looking. Sokolo trying to pass across for JM there, but couldn't connect. A great shot right there, but Dembski gets the block. Nice chances coming up from YMCA, but running out of time. Rebound. Score! Sokolo on the doorstep. Picks that one up and deposits it into the back of the net. YMCA capitalize on the power play. one nothing. I'm not sure how often YMCA watches the film, but that's one that they'll be happy to go and look back at. A textbook power play from all five skaters in the offensive zone just kept that, it kept that cycle going, create that space, and they didn't just cycle it to pass it around, they got chances and created opportunities for themselves, took advantage there after the initial shot for the rebound, and capitalized to give themselves that one not the lead. A beautiful power play paying off for YMCA Esports right there. Something we haven't seen so far from YMCA in this uh, two-game set is a lead, but HD71 looking to kind of uh, get rid of that immediately here is on the counterattack. Sent around. JM has it. Down the wing side. It can't maintain it for long. Dembski on the counterattack. Rubitas beats his uh, defensive counter uh, on uh, counterpart. Jeez, words are hard here. This game's going too fast, man. I can't even think. Rubitas. Now Antonio has it. This feeds it to Mataliska. Antonio, relentless on the pursuit, has it low. Tries to shot at the odd angle. Looks like it hit the post there. Not a bad play for, uh, from Benny. He was on the angle. Maybe there just wasn't any room. What a pass out front and Dembski. Denied by Benny, who is really on his game today. JM trying to feed what looks like uh, Yuga, who has jump, uh, jumped in the rush there. We are unable to connect, and that one goes out of play. Instead, going back to that chance there from HV71, that play started similar to the two goals in game one from behind the net. They went from behind the net, passed it in front, and had a chance. But Benna knew that play was coming, read it well to stop that chance. What a blistering shot from the point there. Looked like Julius taking a ripper in Copa line and turning it aside, but YMCA still on the attack. Sokolo, rebound, JM, what a play by Kofa line and slides back in his crease to take away the bouncing puck that was surely bound for the back of the net. This is a goaltending performance by both of these guys to be remembered. And remember that one if HV71 finds a way to tie that game. That was a sure goal from YMCA to Kofi Line and stop. What a play. Julius sends it over to Kauto. Demski trying to bit else getting didn't have the speed on it. Sokolo can't get it in the zone, however. JM forced to reset with his teammates. Sent back and they'll be forced to reset even further as Yuge retrieves it behind the net. Tried a slap pass play, but unfortunately Anho Kuru got a little bit in the way of that one. And now HV71, time taking away, looking for an attack, but Yuge will just hold it in the corner and kill the rest of the clock here. That ends this period as well. YMCA nursing a slim one nothing lead, but with how these two teams play, with how these two goaltenders play, it could actually end up being a difference maker, just that one goal here, but still plenty of hockey left to play for this thing to open up. Yeah, and it's been interesting to kind of watch YMCA work after what was a sluggish um, first couple of periods for them in the last game offensively, the first period especially. They started out hot in this one. I know they didn't really get the most chances to start out in the first few minutes, but I feel like from the 10 minute mark on, YMCA, it was all them in the first period. From that point forward, they got that power play and took advantage of it. And you know, Sid, we kind of hinted at it when they did get that penalty to their advantage. Could that be the difference in this first period? HV71 not able to take advantage of their power play, not a lot of chances, and YMCA not letting them get into the zone while when YMCA was on the power play, they would stay in the offensive zone, got a good cycle going, got themselves some chances, and were able to take advantage of the one that they got that was clear cut. So that's been kind of the difference in this game so far. Now HV71, a team that has struggled to score themselves, they have to find a way to respond to time to set. Absolutely here is uh, YMCA only getting better as this game goes on here. So they keep trending in the right direction. It's a good news for them and a bit of dire news for HG71 who need to find something to get. <laughs> that was a beautiful, beautiful forward check by Antonio. was able to get that puck and here they go in on the attack. YMCA now behind the net trying to get that puck away. But both Dembski, or sorry, no, that was Metalyskin Antonio doing a good job 
behind the net. Rubitus gets the intercept in the new neutral zone, but can't make anything out of it. Two on one now developing for YMCA. On Kuru over to JM, just a little bit out of reach. Looks like he was slowing up to open up a one-timer, but on Kuru misread the situation. And an offside will lead to a stoppage in play here. 16-39 left in the second. You're seeing the aggressiveness kind of show out a little bit more from HV71. They know the situation they're in, and you can kind of tell with the two four checkers there in Metalyska and Antonio Mann behind the net. They're trying to create that turnover to give themselves a chance. I like that they're ramping that aggressiveness up now before maybe things get a little bit too late in this game. There's a pressure coming out from HV71. Getting that puck back in. Nice play by Antonio. Forces the turnover. Here comes Dembski. Low shot looking for the rebound. Metalyska gets a whack at it, and Benu keeps it out. Madaliska retrieves the puck. Once again, another low shot. Pinching, and now is Kauto who retrieves it to Dembski. Dembski out front and stopped. Not a whole lot of space, but they are trying to get to that middle. Sent down low, but Madaliska had already moved off of his bumper position. Sokolo. And picked off by Dembski in the neutral zone. Now, HV71 starting to get a little bit of momentum here. And a, a YMCA going to want to try to stop that and get some offense of their own. But you can see the aggressiveness coming out from HV71. Another errant pass, but Sokolo is able to get it. JM now enters the zone. Has support. Dangerous play right there, but they keep it alive. JM can get the shot away. Pursues it. Gets possession. Back out front on Helkura with a quick shot there. A position save from Kofalainen. And not a big rebound, although it did look like he fought it off a little bit. Yes, and then there's an example of the counterattack that we kind of mentioned earlier. YMCA, they were hemmed in their own zone a little bit. HV71 applying some pressure. YMCA finding a way to get out of their own zone and pressure on the other side. They get that off of the zone faceoff, and now they turn themselves into an attacking team from that. You get with the puck, and offside was Sokolo right there as uh, you had decided to take that in on his own. So we get another stoppage in play here, approaching the midway point. Of this period, still a 1-0 lead for YMCA. Face off, tie up, JM coming in for it, but Antonio's the one to get possession. Matalaiska takes it in, Antonio retrieves it. Has Dembski down low with him, they start the cycle back up top, and Rubitus just missed that one. The puck goes all the way back, and HV71 forced to reset of their own volition. Dembski with the puck. Can enter the zone, but forced offside. A nice poke. Good job at the blue line there from YMCA. Yeah, that's what YMCA needs to do to keep HV71 out of the zone. We know how they like to try to get into that offensive zone and establish it in order to get a cycle going and get themselves that clear-cut opportunity. But if you don't let them get past that blue line, it's something that H-Reds is so good at, you don't give themselves that chance to try to get that cycle going and get that opportunity. Absolutely, always try to emulate what some of those top teams do and having a good blue line stand is definitely something that you want to do. There's a shot from um, essentially way across the ice on the Ben who had to kind of make a bit of a tough save right there. Be surprised if that one went in, but it did look like it kind of took him by surprise. One back by Dembski. Nice give and go between the point men there. Kauto shot can't get through. JM looking to move it out, but a great play by Rubitus. One touch deep to enter the zone by Madaliska. They just kind of full rush their way through. Puck still alive and still fighting for it. HV71, the four checking pressure, continuing to ramp up here as this game goes along as they are down by one goal. Sokolo now with the puck, drops it to JM. JM with the shot, blocked by Kauto, and Dembski takes it out of the zone. Aaron Pass will force them to reset. Rubitus behind his own net. Sent over to Madaliska. Gotta be careful there. Bit of an awkward pass of his own. Yuga has it. Sokolo looking for maybe a wrap chance there. Just didn't get enough clearance on the net. And here come HV71. Taken away once again, and that will be a drawn penalty right there. Good job by Sokolo. Good pressure by YMCA. And that will be Antonio once again sitting in the box for a trip. Yeah, just getting a little bit aggressive, trying to get the puck out of the stick of the YMCA player there, and it just unfortunately was not in position to really get that cleanly. We saw YMCA, they were able to capitalize on their power play earlier. It was their first of the season. If they really get another one here, they put themselves in a great position, especially with how HV71 is throwing offensively this season. Absolutely. There's a quick shot there from JM off of the draw. Was blocked down by Rubitus, who looks to get the clear. Delays too long, and here's YMCA. Passed out front, Sokolo. And finally able to get that one out. Bit of a dangerous situation. Good clear by Kauto. And YMCA now forced to reset. If they can gain this line once again, establish themselves, they'll have a good chance to extend this lead. But 
miss pass right there and clear all the way back and Madaliska won't have the speed unfortunately got to be careful here as Yuga now with the puck sent over to Sokolo back to Yuga and enters the zone JM set back the cycle begins Yuga back to Anho Kuru send it down low to Sokolo got to be careful there against Rubitus with the puck right in his face Yuga now trying to go to the middle there JM can't connect and out of the zone, penalty killed for HV71. Antonio out of the box here. HV71 looking to get some attack, but they'll have to wait. As the counterattack coming out, but it leads to an offside. Less than a minute left here in the second. Yeah, that's a crucial penalty kill there for HV71. And unlike the first power player, YMCA had a lot of chances. They really established that offensive zone time. Not so much left there on that second chance. So HV71, a great job adjusting in that line to get those opportunities. Auto now good bit of defense, but under some uh, pressure here by Sokolo, who does force the turnover at least momentarily. But Rubitas, not a lot of time left, trying to get one more slap pass opportunity. JM gets the puck, one more shot, but not enough time or space for YMCA, and they'll take that one nothing lead into the dressing room once again here, heading into the third period, and a little bit on the back of Benu, who's had to make some big, big saves. Yeah, we talked about it in that first game, how phenomenal Benna was despite not being able to get the win. And he's carried that momentum over here in this game too. And this time they award him. He's up going into this third period. And the way he has played, it's hard to imagine that he will not let up. HV71 is going to try to hope that they can find a way to break him. They've even tried that behind in that play a few times. But YMCA reading that a little bit better, defending it a little bit better this time. And Benna on one or two of those attempts, making the save, anticipating that play coming from this HV71 offense. So the way that he has been offensively, it's going to be tough to beat YMCA, but I don't think they're going to feel comfortable with a one-goal lead. Really going to look to be aggressive and try to increase this lead to two. Next goal is going to be big. Absolutely. And I mean, when you look at the stats, pretty even across the board. I mean, the kind of biggest differentials between the shots, 11 to 7, but the time and attack, exceptionally even. The faceoffs, dead even here. So see which team is going to be able to gain that advantage here in this third period. But the advantage on the scoreboard still lies with YMCA as JM has the puck sent over to Julius, who gains the line. Good step up by Kauto to disrupt, and HV71 will get that puck. Madaliska retrieves it. Antonio Manon, quick pass to Dembski in the middle, but they can't capitalize. Manon from behind the net. Trying a little uh, quick wraparound play right there, but stopped by Benno once again. Yugen now enters the line. Great bit of puck protection on the wall. Sent it. And unfortunately, the pass hit the back of the net. Sokolo couldn't come away with it. Rubitus circles around, hits Madaliska, looking for Antonio. Nice stick lift there, but on Helkuru maintains possession. The neutral zone battle coming in uh, very, very strong right now in favor of HV71. Dembski back to Kauto. Look in, takes that shot on, goes all the way through traffic. No deflection, no shot block. And Benna swallows it up. Actually looks like he tried to play that one out at the last second, but the whistle still get through. Yeah, and that was a sneaky chance there on Benna. Had to be sharp. That's one of those things sometimes trickle past the goalie when you have so many buys in front, so much to keep in mind. Nice job there from Benna being sharp for that save. So Colo now gets it over to Angel Cooper, who will have some space. Has him beat wide, but can't go to the backhand there. The back checkers had that cut off. Kofalainen just had to hold that short side, and he did. No shot attempt at the end of the day. Angel Cooper now with space resetting. Yuge trying to find someone. No one home. Kauto moves it up to Antonio Manon. Sends it over to Rubatus there, but a bit of miscommunication. Mytalize get just a step offside. Couldn't get back in time. Yes, and you're starting to see HV71 starting to get going a little bit more, getting that offensive zone time as they did a couple of times in the first and second period. The question is, can they find a way to break through and get that first goal? Definitely the big, big question here is a uh, shot from distance by Kauto gets blocked. Quickly approaching the midway point of this third period here. Still looking for the first goal is HV71 as YMCA looking to get some more chances of their own and get that insurance marker. Kauto sent up to Dembski. Works it out. Great pass over to Rubitus who has space. Sends it to Antonio. Delays a bit and the cycle begins. Shot from distance Rubitus. It gets through but well kicked aside by Benno. Wraparound chance from Antonio. And here they go. HV71 swarming. Puck down low. Great skating by Antonio to clear up some space. Dembski trying to get a shot away. Blocked by JM. Sokolo to Angel Kuru. Who gains the line. JM picks it up. Good body by Rubitus there who will get the puck. And Madaliska trying to go up the boards. But great play by YMCA to keep that in. A nice attempt there from Sokolo to clear up some space with a spinorama. But couldn't capitalize on the pass. 
Madaliska couldn't quite get that puck in with possession here, but Dembski does a great job of hustling and getting to that puck first. Excellent poke to keep it alive. Shot on from Kauto. Doesn't quite get through, but you can see HG71's mentality. Shooting it from everywhere. Looking for rebounds. Looking for bounces. Looking for deflections. Looking for something. Some other look to get in. Here come YMCA. Great work down low. Sokolo to JM. JM hungry for that puck. Stays on it. Sokolo, same thing. And another penalty taken by HG71. This time a slash. YMCA will go to the power play once again. And this is huge at this stage of the game because for YMCA, obviously you hope that you can score it and maybe that second goal puts the icing on the cake, but potentially even bigger, that's two minutes to where HV71 cannot really be as aggressive as you would hope. So now you go from potentially 607 to 407 to find that tying goal. Huge here for YMCA to potentially take advantage. We'll start with some down low cycle work on Helkuru. They go in with a bit of an umbrella set. Oh, and Sokolo maybe had a chance to just kind of backhand that on net himself, opted for the pass, and it goes kind of across the crease there, maybe looking for a bit too great A of an opportunity instead of just putting that puck on. You're going to have to regain right, the line now. Yuge does, and JM has it. Sent down low to Sokolo. Back up top. Yuge with it. And Sokolo down low, looking for an opportunity. He gets pressured. Great work. Antonio has it. Gets the clear. It will exit the zone if it doesn't go all the way down. Just a few seconds remaining. One more rush opportunity. YMCA on Kuru can't get around Kauto, who gets that last clear. That will be yet another kill for HV71, but time running out for them to get this tying marker and momentum in the favor of YMCA. Sokolo down Main Street gets poked off the stick at the last second. Antonio now. Clean the rush. Hits Dembski on the left wing side. Dembski towards the middle. Madalaiska puck in front. And somehow, someway, Julius gets it out of trouble. Sokolo now. Going back the other way, buying time. Great job by JM to hold the line. Works it down low, but not able to keep possession. Dembski to Antonio to Madaliska. Feeds back to Antonio, but they can't gain the line cleanly. Almost down to the one minute mark here of this third period. Time ticking away quickly now, but will tick away slower with that real time minute. Madaliska with the puck. Antonio can't quite get it. Sent all the way down, that will go for icing. And an offensive zone face-off for HV71. Looks like we'll see the timeout coming out as well. Yeah, and I like that, Carlson. Just take a deep breath, maybe get a play collected, and maybe even just as importantly, you get your player that extra rest. So now you can be as aggressive as you want to be and not have to worry as much about that fatigue of the game. But how about YMCA? We kind of mentioned how that power play could be big for them even if they didn't score because they had that chance to take over the possession. They've drained a lot of time since that power play in, in excuse me, HV71. It's not had a shot on them since that power play attempt. So maybe, just maybe, that could make a difference. But now they get an offensive zone face off. Maybe they can get a set play. Gonna have to beat a really solid face-off man, though, and on Kuru to try to get this going, though. Absolutely. No bigger face-off in this game than right now for Dembski and Angel Kuru. We'll see who gets the advantage of it. A regular face-off set for HV71. Angel Kuru wins it. Yuge will delay a bit. They'll just try to get a controlled breakout, but here comes that pressure coming out from HV71. The controlled breakout works. YMCA will reset. Might just look to get that puck in deep, but they're looking for a possession. Good job by JM keeping that one in low. Great job so far. The pass can't make it through to Antonio there. Adeliska, good idea there. Just maybe would have preferred a sauce pass instead to get that one through. Antonio had a step. Great job. Kauto off balance shot. Rebound. Kept out by Venu. Another shot opportunity. HV71 porting it on. Just 10 seconds left about. 12, sorry. Empty net. Coming out from HV70. Oh, is a delayed penalty. So they'll actually have an advantage here on the faceoff. They may even see them pull the goalie here as well to get some six on four action there. As you can see, a bit too much contact coming out from Julius. The right defenseman will be sitting in the box here for YMCA with 10 seconds left. 9.5 to be exact here. This is a huge opportunity. They opt to not pull the goaltender here, HV71, keeping a five on four advantage. Face-off one by Angel Kuru. That's absolutely massive. Kauto can't keep the puck in. Looks like YMCA will skate to a 1-0 shutout victory. Well earned by Benna. Well-deserved team win for YMCA. Great face-off skill by Angel Kuru. Those two face-offs, absolutely crucial. And they pick up the split here in the series.
Sin, we talked about it in the open of this two game set. The face off percentage of Angel Kuru, 57.1 coming into today. And we saw how big those face offs showed up between the one that he won in his own zone and the one that he won right there in the offensive zone of HP 71 to clear it out on the power play twice and to clear that out to give YMCA this win. And, you know, neither of these two teams really got out of that scoring funk, but just kind of continuing the trend that we've seen them have success with using their defense, using their goaltending to ride them out just enough to find a way to win. And both these goalies, Benna and, Ko and Kofi, just absolutely amazing today. Benna winning one, Kofi winning one, both of them deserving to get one win at least. And what a two game set that we had. There's an absolutely amazing to watch. Yeah, that that really was, you know, really kind of the way we predicted it could have gone very tight in the in the matter of scoring. Both defenses playing well, both goaltenders playing phenomenally, and goals really, really hard to come by. And every single capitalization that you you can think of, uh, you know, it, it absolutely matters. And you you know, it's YMCA going to be happy about getting that split, but definitely going to feel like some missed opportunities here and there. But I would say, you know, Angel Kuru failing to pull the trigger in that first game, a little bit made up for with those two clutch face-off wins in the defensive end at the end there to prevent HB71 really from even getting a last-second chance on net. And, I mean, it came down to a rebound goal. It came down to a blue-collar goal. It came down from a, a team that was just, you know, working hard and able to capitalize on an opportunity in YMCA. So a very even series between these two teams ends kind of the way we expected it to with a split. Uh, cr kind of crazily, no overtimes, although, you know, both of those games really had the feeling that they could go to overtime, but both of them ending in regulation. And, I mean, important points for both teams there. Yeah, and, you know, it's interesting because, obviously, HV71, they won game one, but looking at the standings, if they were able to scoop four points, they would have been in a tie for third with Goon. So that was huge for YMCA to be able to steal those points because the more we get deeper in the season, these are two teams that could very well be jockeying for those final playoff spots, a YMCA team and an HV71 team that are kind of looking to defy the odds, so to speak, this season. So that's huge for YMCA to pick up that win. And it, like you said, Sin, kind of what we expected, two really evenly tight teams, two teams that were kind of going in the same direction, and they found a way to both come out with two points. So I, I think both teams, like you said, kind of some missed opportunities. I know HV71 would have loved to have gotten four out of four, but... YMCA, they got the one goal they needed and rode Benna the rest of the way there. So a spectacular performance from both, both goalies. And, I mean, what more do you want than entertainment despite not a lot of goal scoring? It's what you love to see. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not too sure if the games are being reported, but we'll get you a quick look at the uh, the latest results uh, as well. So, uh, well, actually, the standings first. And why not? I mean, some things have changed here and there. So you see HG71. So only it looks like one report of it, but that's okay. You'll see. Uh, then with the same amount of points and theoretically the same uh, place in the standings here, but you would have seen, uh, you sorry, you will see YMCA move up quite a bit and at least uh, at least out of the, uh, the guaranteed relegation position for the time being there. They'll be tied with Havu when it comes to points. But uh, I mean, again, the season starts to fly by very quickly. We mentioned it early. Goons already a third of the way through the season. We saw them play a bit earlier versus Atreds, who took two shutouts against them and took them both the way there. And, there's HV71 and YMCA, very tight, low-scoring games between the pair of them. Yeah, and it's interesting because three of the games we covered today were shutouts. So the goalies, winners here in all of our games so far. And Shutout Sunday. We got it now. There we go. We, we have yeah, a name. Shutout shut, Sunday. Shutout shut Sunday. There. <laughs> I like that. Shut out Sunday. So it's kind of one of those things where the goaltending and the defense came out to play today. And we especially saw that between H Reds and both HV71 and mm -hmm. YMCA. And we kind of talked about the playoff implications for YM or excuse me, for HV71. How about YMCA? You have to remember, they started out at 15th. Now they're just a game away or a point away rather from being on the left side of the bracket. And that's why it's so important to kind of position yourself early. So when you get towards the end of the season, you are in that hunt. YMCA last season kind of got off to a sluggish start. And by the time we started to pick up, they weren't really in position to get one of those last spots. So now trying to kind of rectify that. We'll see if they can continue to do so here tomorrow. But a nice start there today getting two out of four points.
Yeah, absolutely. A nice start indeed. And uh, that just about wraps things up for us today in this ECL Elite Sports Gamer broadcast. So we thank you all very much for watching. We thank our sponsors, of course, Wilhelm, Kobel Unlock, Ritzy, and ST Hockey for helping make uh, this ECL spring season what it is today. You can find B Major, as you see on screen, on Twitter there, at B Major. And uh, any, anything else you got going on? YouTube, Twitch, anything. Nah, man, just Twitter. Might have to expand one of these days, but all in for the casting here. It's such a joy to be here casting with you, and going to be fun, man, to do it tomorrow, a long season, but it's been a fun week and a half so far. Yeah, absolutely. I was just going to say, well, you can definitely find him here tomorrow sitting right beside me once again for some more ECL Elite action. You can find me, of course, uh, on Twitter, as you saw on screen, on YouTube uh, as well, and now on Instagram for my music stuff, at Paul Cinder. So there we are, the matchup for tomorrow. Sabo Esports taking on Habu Gaming, and we'll see YMCA Esports once again this time taking on Edinburgh. It was a fantastic day of ECL Elite action, and it will be an even more fantastic day tomorrow as this season continues to build and suspense builds, getting ready for these playoffs. This is the second week of ECL action already. There's only six weeks in it. This is going to fly by very, very quickly, so make sure you guys tune in for every broadcast. It'll be tomorrow, 1945 CEST start time. We hope to see you there. Have a good one.